Hello everyone, um, Maddie Proud here from the New South Wales SWIFTS. So I've got a session for you guys today. We're going to be analysing the highlights package of our final against this uh, fever last year in 2020. actually lost this game just by a couple of goals, which was pretty disappointing. Um, in this highlights package, you'll see I'm playing wing attack, so played that position for the entire game. Um, so um, a bit of background about this game. The West Coast Fever is a team we were playing. Um, their sort of huge difference is their goal shooter is um, about 201 centimetres tall, I'm going to say, um, and pretty much unstoppable, unstoppable. She averages kind of 60-odd goals a game um, and can kind of single-handedly win games for them. So I guess a lot of our game plan revolved around stopping um, her getting the ball, which meant doing a lot of work up the court um, to stop it even getting down to our goalkeeper because it's almost impossible for her to stop it once it's in the air. So you'll see in this highlights package, our goalkeeper did an amazing job um, and just, yeah, we'll talk through it as we go. So we can see there's some strong takes in the air. The Fever team are um, very physical as well. We know their two defenders, particularly in that goal circle, um, yeah, their kind of biggest attribute is their physicality and obviously their ability to be in the air. So we're probably straying away from our game plan in that play, um, meaning that we need to keep things shorter and not up in the air for them to get. And then you can see exactly what I was talking about earlier with that long bomb um, in there. So again, something we would have wanted in that moment, I'll just pause it for a second, is hands over the defender. So if I just go back, um, sorry, hands over the passer. So if I just go back to this highlight, so you can see Verity Simmons, the centre for the West Coast Fever, she pretty much delivers this ball off about half a second um, and doesn't have any hands over, which means that her vision, you can see even her light, eyes lighting up there, um, is all for the goal shooter. So again, the focus for us was making sure that no ball is delivered into that goal circle without really high, strong hands over to block the vision and block that connection. So this is really an example of when um, we strayed from that game plan, but mainly because it was such a fast transition in the ball. Um, you know, Verity got it on the run and released it within half a second. So there's not really much we can do about this. But had we slowed the ball down coming out of defence, um, Paige, the centre, who you can see in the left of screen, would have had a chance to be able to get hands up over this ball. But again, when you got a big target like that, this is pretty hard to stop. This is probably a prime example of what we wanted our goalkeeper to be able to do. See, she's come off her player. She knows that she's probably not going to be able to beat Janelle in the air. So coming off and actually attacking the pass um, was one of the best ways for her to be able to get the ball back, which definitely worked for us. Now, this is one of the highlights of the game. They're going to show a replay, I think. So knowing that it was going to be pretty hard to stop any shots, or get any rebounds, our defenders have decided to use, I don't know what you'd even call this, a lift or a hoist or something like that. So obviously gives them a lot more height over the shot. Um, and then they actually drop, I think Sarah drops Maddie just in time to be able to try and get the rebounds. Now the goal got, the ball got dished off, so it didn't quite work, but it looked specky. Right there, you can see myself, I'm going to criticise myself. Okay, so you see, we've just got the ball back. Really good effort. And then I get the ball here and it's kind of everything's happening. And instead of just taking a minute to breathe and reset, especially when everything's been as crazy as this, I sort of try and rush it, step forwards and don't put the ball right into space. So that's something that I need to work on moving forwards. Had I just taken my time and actually executed that pass properly, I could change things. And so, again, I'm going to pick myself apart here. So... Obviously, my eyes at this point, um, I'm only looking at Sam, my sh the goal shooter. So I'm not even knowing what's going on here. And while to some degree that's sometimes a good thing, meaning that I've, you know, I'm really focused on who I'm going to pass to, I just don't have open enough vision to see what else is going on. And that has led to throwing the ball into her hand. So, again, if I'd just got the ball up a little bit higher, had it actually higher release, this wouldn't have happened. And see here, we're still up by... Um, oh, that's eight goals. So with seven minutes to go in the last quarter, went up by eight goals. If I had just executed that pass, that really puts a lot of pressure on to know that they're down by nine goals with seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Really could have changed the game. Um, a big, big lesson for our team to learn from um, that game is just to 
take a deep breath and as cliche as it sounds, just go back to process. You, you overthink things, you start to stress out because you could have had a nine-goal lead and now you've only got a four-goal lead. But instead of just, you know, running on that pure adrenaline and nerves, if we'd all just taken a deep breath and actually gone, you know what, if we just score this next goal, we're still going to be four goals up, then that really could have changed the game. Yeah, a big learning for us and I think as a team we know that we will – never want to feel like that again so what can we do and we'll learn so much from that game and while at the time you probably didn't think that looking back now I already know so many things that I'll be able to put into practice um, heading into season 2021 to know that you know we 